Hey y'all, I'm Jay. What's up? I'm Chris, the Bird Nerd. And we are uh, the Bird the Bird Brain. Brains. Hey, I think I think that one because that one was insane. a little bit off. That one might have been good. Yeah, uh-huh. to me it sounds a little bit off, but usually I find the ones where we're about a second apart end up. I wonder though if that one's going to link up or if it's going to go. Which, you know, which is funny. I think it's like a second off for you, but for me it was like. Right on That par. one was like, dead we on. We said it the same, so we'll see who's right, right. I guess. Uh, you guys yeah. put, it in the com- put it in the comments, you guys. Did you like it or – Was it good? Were we practice? on or were we off? <laughs> we, uh, we, try, we aim for perfection, right? Uh, we haven't gotten there yet, but we'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, and we, <laughs> we, don't have, we don't have our mugs with us, you know, but I, I, uh, there's, there's this guy that I follow on Instagram. I can't remember his name. And it's like these two dudes sitting out on the dock with their mugs. Dock you know, talk. They do like the, they do like dad, the dad jokes. Dad jokes and try not to laugh. I'm like, we, we need to get something going on like that and find some bird jokes and uh, start our bird brain podcast off like that. And we should laugh. do, we should do like a, all the funny stories, all the bird jokes episode. <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> I'll yeah. take it. That'd be awesome. We'll, we'll, we'll save that for like season two when we're really digging for <laughs> ideas. Yeah. Um, speaking of ideas, go mix it up in the comments section. If you have a question, we'll try to find out an answer. If we don't know the answer, we'll ask somebody smarter or we'll Google it and we'll tell you. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, between Chris and I, we have something like 40 years of bird keeping experience. So we we've, we've probably – at least trial and error it, or we've talked to somebody who has, I talk to people all over the world all the time. Yeah. Um, we really want to help. So if you got a question, you got a topic, you got, you just want, you have a favorite bird you want us to talk about. Yeah. Drop a comment. Do. And, and I think Jay, some, some of our most common frequent questions asked deal with sick birds, right? Medications. What do we do? My birds fluffed up. It's not flying, not acting normal. What are the next steps? So we thought we'd uh, take those comments and do a podcast today on sick birds. Kind of see what yep. information we can get out there for you guys. So I guess first let's talk about how do you know you have a sick bird, right? You kind of already yeah. hit it there. So um, a normal healthy bird, right, it's going to sit upright on the perch. It's not going to be on the ground. It's going to be on the perch. Its eyes are going to be open and alert. All its feathers are going to be streamlined and look, you know, mostly kind of correct. You close, might close together, right? Hugged into the body and aerodynamic, really, right? Yep. yep. And you know, every once in a while, you get a bird that's in molt or whatever reason, it might have a one wonky feather. That's okay. That's not what we're talking about. Sick birds are going to do things like be on the ground. They're going to look like they're sleeping all the time is a common one, or breathing heavily. If your bird looks like it just ran a marathon, that's weird. Um, if, if you've got if, birds with like dirty vents, you know, poop yeah, around I was gonna say, the, their bums or runny poop and diarrhea, right? Those are all signs something's not right. Right. So, and if you're keeping birds, especially birds in like a cage that has paper on the bottom, that's a great way to monitor your bird's health. In fact, and we'll talk about it today, Einstein, uh, he's not really even fully out of the woods, but my, my parrot, my Eclectus parrot has been through a health scare. And one of the main ways that I caught that was his poop changed. Yeah. And that's a huge indicator that you got problems. There's trouble in River City. Um, that's often one of the earliest indicators. Another thing I'll see, I'll see like birds doing like touch and goes, what I call it. So you'll see them kind of passing out like it looks like uh-huh. a drunk person at the end of the night maybe uh or a, like a little kid that's can't stay awake at school um and then just general lethargy you know if you watch your birds all the time like we both do and like most i think most people that keep birds watch them a lot it's very relaxing right that's a big yeah. zen thing for me you notice pretty quickly if you have a bird that's having a problem yeah and and I, so lots of times, Jay, I, I try to relate it to a human, right? When we don't feel good, we do all of those things, right? We're cold, right? So if a bird's cold, he's going to be all fluffed up. We, we're tired. We want to sleep on the couch or on our bed and wrap up in a blanket. You know, we don't eat much. We usually don't have an appetite, right? 
you usually have the runs, you know, <laughs> with mm-hmm. many sicknesses. So it, it it's really similar signs that a bird would show, right? Just fluffed feathers, eyes are kind of buggy and, and watery. The bird's lethargic, doesn't fly around, doesn't eat, poops runny or a dirty vent. You know, those those are those are your your best early signs that your bird's just not feeling good. So so Jay, when you see that what do you do next? I mean, what, what's the next step of action that you take when you realize, Hey, I don't think my bird's feeling too hot. So, and I'll say this too, with finches, especially basically the smaller, the bird, the less runway you have is how I think of it. So yeah, like Einstein, he, he's been sick for a minute. I think I'm getting him back better now, but it's been a couple weeks and He's a big bird. He had more weight to lose. He had more excess fat stored up and everything. A little finch, a little wax bill. Their line between I'm a totally healthy bird and I'm dead is a thin line. So you I'm want to try 24 to, hours, you know, or, or six, right? You yeah. want to catch this stuff early. And especially if they're stressed on top of that, it's, it's tough. So the first thing I always do is isolate them two main reasons one for that bird's sake let's get it out of the hustle and bustle you know just like a sick kid doesn't go to school doesn't go to play recess a sick bird doesn't need to be in the cage with all the other birds like we've talked about before really good idea to have a small cage already ready to use in these situations so last thing you want to do is see that you have a sick bird and you're trying to run to the nearest pet store to buy a new cage. Don't do that. Get It doesn't have to be huge, right? A sick bird yeah. isn't going to fly around like a healthy bird. Right. You just need a place where you can isolate them and start to monitor them. Put some white paper or a paper towel under there so you can monitor their poop. And then the next thing, like you talked about, they're going to be cold. One of the first things that happens to birds when they get sick is they lose their ability to regulate their own temperature. So... Birds are warm-blooded. They, just like we are, that is one of the first problems they have. And hypothermia will kill them before their illness does in some cases. So yep. a heat lamp, which like I use just like a reptile heat lamp yep. and isolation. The other reason I want to isolate, whatever they've got, they might not have transmitted to the other birds in the, in the aviary yet. So let's get them out of there. Um, and I'll also plug here we've talked about it before and we probably need to do a podcast episode on it quarantine your new birds right. yes yeah and i'll, and I'll tell touched, you Chris, we've touched on that a little bit in some of our podcasts but yes and, and i'll tell you here's my story this is my first time when i really shoot 15 years ago now i i thought i was an experienced bird keeper you know i bred a lot of birds had a lot of finches i was a couple years into the hobby and I got a new male shaft tail and he looked great the day I bought him. Another thing birds do, if they're walking around acting sick, they're going to get eaten. So they know that if they're being watched, if they know that you're there or they're not used to you, they'll act or they're, you know, they're all in a display cage somewhere. They'll act healthy. They'll hide it. Yep. And then, so it turns out, so got the bird home, got him in, and I didn't quarantine. I didn't know any better. I just put him right in. Well, the next day, he was all puffed up. The next day after that, he was dead. Within a week, I lost 15 birds to whatever that illness was. Wow. Because he had it, and then they all got it. And some lived and some didn't, and there was it was really, really brutal. It, you know, it's like, it's like you're, you know, building a whole house of cards and then right at the end, right before you're about to put the top one on, you accidentally bump it and the whole thing falls down. Right. It's awful. <laughs> it was and, awful. And I'll add one piece, Jay, to the, to the heating mm-hmm. elements. Yes. You know, first thing, provide a heat source, right? Whether it's a, a, a reptile heat lamp or a heating pad that you put underneath <laughs> the, the towel, you know, but also make sure that the bird has the opportunity to come into the heat and go out of the heat. Many yeah, times good. I think, I think people just put that heat lamp directly over them and they get too hot. Right. And they don't have anywhere to escape and then they die of overheat exhaustion. Right. And so 
So just making sure they have that mm -hmm. ability within the cage to say, okay, I'm too hot over here. I'm going to come over on this side, even if it's still on the floor, right? Because they're not feeling good, but they can come over to where it's cooler and they can kind of help regulate their own temperature that way too. Yeah, I try to put it on one side of the cage so that they yep. can, they got a cold side and a hot side. That's a great thing to add, Chris. And then, so once that's done, right? So you, now you've isolated your bird, you've got heat. All, all the same normal requirements, right? You want to make sure they have food. I also always give millet because you want them, if a bird stops eating, you know, a normal finch, you're looking at 30% of their body weight in food in a day. It's, yep. they're, you're getting close to hummingbirds, right? With these small birds, they need to take in a lot of calories. So uh, egg food, millet, regular food, you want them to have opportunities to eat yeah. things and you want to kind of minimize the amount of work they have to do. So if the bird's on the ground, a cage cup up in the corner with food doesn't help you. Just put a little bit. I yeah. use like the uh, the top of a can. I have a couple of these just saved with a real low thing. The bird can just lean over and get food. That's how I provide it to a sick bird. Yeah. And and one thing I do too, Jay, in that same aspect, you know, um, I've, I've got, there, there's a medication called Thrive, right? And it's just basically a, a boost to immunization. There you go. And many times when you when you see that your bird's not feeling good, you put them in the cage, chances are they're dehydrated, right? And that's that's part of their lethargy. Uh, so you, I try to, that first six hours in their water, give some of that thrive to give them a little bit of that boost of energy. And then the, and then I introduce whatever medication it is that, that, that we're trying to treat the bird for. But just kind of, you know, it's like you go to the hospital, you're super dehydrated. They put an IV in you, right, to right. kind of bo boost you back up, get you, get your, your water, you know, going, and, and then introduce, you know, whatever antibiotic or, or whatever it is to, to help your sickness. And so I've tried that method with the birds. I feel like most of the time, if I've caught the bird early enough, it helps big time. Big um, time, yeah. Sometimes you're too late, let's be honest, cause, because you don't catch that the bird's sick until it is too late. But, yeah, that's something that I've done that helps. Yeah, and, I mean, it's a, if you read the ingredients on, th on um, Thrive, you've got protein concentrates, so like we're talking about, keeping food in the birds. You've got electrolytes, so kind of like Gatorade. You've got vitamin A, C, D3, and E in here. So this is essentially – a protein shake with Gatorade in it. So if you were sick and you were dehydrated and you were malnourished, this, that's great. And I, I use, I absolutely do it too. Um, and you know, I guess here's where we say, first of all, not a veterinarian. Didn't yes. even stay at a holiday Inn express last night. <laughs> right. Um, but I, and I'll also say, you know, we, we kind of talk about it casually, and I don't want to alarm people. I have lost birds. I've had birds die. I've had young birds die. I've had old birds die. Especially all with kinds, All kinds of crazy things. Night fright. I've had a rat eat some we've talked about recently. I mean, you're going, if you keep finches, you will lose a bird eventually unless you only ever keep two and you're the luckiest guy on earth or something like that. You keep a big flock, just like, yeah. you know, humans, right? Like car accidents, illnesses, things happen, unfortunately, in life. Don't, if you're losing all your birds all the time, you need to take a step back and reevaluate things very right. quickly. If you lose a, a bird to something, it doesn't necessarily even mean you've made a mistake. There's like things like twirling and Gouldians. It's genetic. They don't know what it is, but it's genetic. And you could do everything perfectly that bird hits about two years old starts stargazing twirling and then it's over so yeah don't you know we've talked about this before the the survival rate in the wild for finches from the time they hatch just to get to adulthood is like five percent right. and then adult birds it's really low too they're really fragile they're really small and they're the line that they live on between like i said totally healthy and not alive is a it's always, they're always on a tightrope. Yeah. So don't get discouraged. Don't blame yourself. Don't give up the hobby if you lose a bird. And, and I would add in there, Jay, um, 
veterinarians are a great resource. And, and if, if you want to look and see if you have a local veterinarian that, that specializes in birds, you know, by all means, please go for it, please do it. And you know, they're, they're a resource, right? Uh, when you have a lot of birds like Jay and I do, you come across a lot of, uh, you know, whether it's sick birds or injuries, things like that, a veterinarian bill can get pretty expensive, especially with the amount of birds that we have, you know, and, and looking at, you know, our podcast that we've posted before on economy of birds, which is coming out, you'll see that before you see this one. Um, you know, just, just weighing the pros and cons financially with birds, uh, it, that, that's something to look at. And so, you know, we have these medications that are provided to us, but, but by all means, please do your homework. We're, we're not saying this is the only way. And, you know, if you want to seek veterinarian uh, expertise or opinions, please, please do. Right. And, you know, this is just what we've been able to, to do over the last several years, you know, of just our experiences. But that doesn't mean that's the only way. It doesn't mean it's maybe the best way. And, and there's other, uh, other better ways, but this is just what's worked for us. So take, take that, you know, with a grain of salt. Also with, you know, reach out to your veterinarian if you do have that resource close by, mm -hmm. you know, that, that is an option. Yeah, and and I'll say this too. I'm, I'm. I try not to be a judgmental person. I I am not your dad. I'm not gonna. If you have a question and you call me or you you DM me and you say, hey, look, I got this sick bird, and the nearest bird vet is eight hours away, and I can't afford it, et cetera. I I'm not gonna be the kind of person like you see on Reddit that, you know, you you're yeah. irresponsible. Yeah. You should have yeah. never gotten a bird. I'm not gonna do yeah. that. I want to help. We'll help you. But right. Um you have to decide as the human that's over this bird, right? How you think you can best handle it. You know, if you give it your best effort, I think that's all anybody could ask. Right. So yeah. do I take birds to the vet? Absolutely. Einstein went to the vet this week. Right. And we'll, we'll I'll give it some details on that in a minute. I do think he's going to be okay. Knock on wood. Cause I love Einstein, <laughs> but, um, yeah, there, have there been times I've taken a finch to the vet? The most of the time, do I take a zebra finch to the vet? No, right. And in fact, I think in the way with the level of expertise and the understanding that I've gotten to at this point, having taken birds to the vet before, having talked to the vet, um, you know, Einstein at the vet this week, it was much more of a partnership conversation than it was a vet tells me what to do type conversation. But not everybody's at that point. Uh, you know, I've seen most of the common bird illnesses we're about to talk about before. I can identify them, I can recognize them, and I can treat them effectively. If you're not there yet, you know, that's fine too. And, you know, we'll get into medication here in a second. I also want to say this. A, uh ounce of prevention is worth more than a pound of cure. 100%. So quor quarantine, keep your cage clean. Don't do things to stress out your birds, like overcrowd them. So as long as you're able to avoid those issues, you're, you're setting yourself up to not have the problems. Some of these medications, we'll get into that. Let's start there. So yeah, let's do it, man. Um, and we talked about, um, I can't remember we talked about it. And I actually, I realized I didn't bring it up, but there's some things I treat prophylactically, which means... I treat in advance because I think I it's I treat the whole flock and I I do it whether I think I have a problem or not because it prevents me having a problem. So a big one of those and I didn't bring it up but I, I've shown it before and we talked about it in our uh, mites episode is scat. So all my birds get treated with scat at least once a year and when they come in, and that's to prevent air sac and scaly mites. You know, scat, when used correctly, is very safe. It's very easy to do, and there's it's not an expensive medication. It's Amazon, 20 bucks US. It is worth way – if it costs a lot more than that, I would still use it. That's yeah. just one example. Um, another thing I do use in quarantine, especially for Gouldian finches, is Ronnie Vet. Yep. So Ronnie Vet is an – And they've got a 6% go and a 12%. Yeah, so this is S, so this is the 6%, and I also use the 12%, and I, I kind of use them interchangeably 
while being conscious of what I'm using. I'll also say this. Well, you know what? I don't want to say anything about going off label. If you follow the label, you'll be okay. But this yeah. medication is very safe. This can be used with chicks in the nest if needed. And in fact, in certain cases, if you think you have a protozoal infection, which this treats canker, it's actually good to use it with chicks in the nest because it prevents parent to chick transmission. Yeah. So canker is kind of an interesting thing. Um, it's kind of like, I guess, like herpes in humans maybe would be the nearest analogy. Yeah. It's not curable, but you can use medication to keep it at bay. Um, so once a bird has it, they have it. Most birds, most of the time, can just live with it. Something else happens. They get some other minor infection. It gets cold. They're stressed out from a new environment. Yep. That's when it'll flare up and they'll start to get really sick. Late stage canker, you'll see like vomiting. You'll see like white stuff in the corners of their mouth. You'll see neck feathers lost, which, by the way, just because you're seeing some of these symptoms doesn't mean that's definitely what it is because there's other things that have the symptoms. But right. that's what it looks like. Um, so I treat this. Very safe medication for canker. And, and I would say with your Goulian finches and your canaries, that, that's a common a common disease, I don't know, or infection, right? Yeah. Um, that, that, that those yeah. birds get. Um, another, kind of like Thrive, I use this one for um, birds that I think might be stressed out. So like birds in quarantine, I'll do NV powder. If you've seen that, and then another thing I like to use, and I use this in egg food, and just full disclosure, I am sponsored by the maker of this, which is Hagen Hari, which is the Hagen Avicultural Research Institute, but Hari Prime, which is another nutrient supplement. I think you could do this in water. Uh, no, I think, I guess not. I, I never do it on water, but moist food, so egg food. So I put this in my egg food, but this is nutrients too. And there are a couple of bird diseases, just like with humans, you know, Sailors at sea used to get scurvy. Vitamin deficiencies can start to cause liver issues and other things. Um, another thing to consider, a lot of birds in the shipping process or the quarantine process, if they're imported, can be dehydrated and have early yeah. stage kidney disease, which is, can be caused by sort of prolonged dehydration that you can't see, you don't know about, and you're not going to go get a CT scan of a finch. <laughs> so consider treating them, especially when you get new birds, with a nutrient supplement, with, a, with an electrolyte supplement to kind of help them do that. Now, you get a bird from me, an ethical breeder, a bird from Chris, that's not going to be the case. But if you're getting your birds and you're not sure, probably best to assume that there's some dehydration going on and take steps to prevent that. Um some other scarier things. So, do, do you, before you yeah, before you get into some of the the more intense ones, do you, do you have any medication on dewormers? Um, yeah, and, and you know, I think that one that's one that's a, a great preventative medication as well. You know, when you get a new bird, um, and then if you if you keep your birds outside or in a colony setting, uh, dewormer is is a great preventative measure as well. I'll, I'll usually you know do that a couple times a year with my birds, and I'll probably do it more now that I have my outdoor aviary set up, and the birds will uh, have access to some of the wild birds that you know that are native to my area. Just making sure that um, that they're on top of that as well. So yeah, uh, and I, I'd say that's mandatory, right? So I I typically I have a, two different ones that I use, and I unfortunately I didn't bring them upstairs. I, I can only fit so many in my hands. Um, but I use MoxiVet, and then I yeah. also have another one that I think is it's a gel. I can't remember the name of it, but it, it does a similar thing. And I'll I'll sometimes alternate them so that I don't have like a resistant, I don't develop a medicine resistance. Uh, MoxiVet I really like. It's really safe, and it. it um, it's not to be used with chicks in the nest, though, so I try to do it before breeding season and then again after breeding season. Um, but MoxiVet's really great, and it, it's also like a it's a 24-hour application, so it's pretty easy to put it in the water. Basically, what I do is I'll pull the water a few hours before so all the birds are thirsty, supply only that. So, like, I shut off my fountain and everything, 
supply that for like a solid 24, 28, 30 hours, and then fresh water again. And that way I know every bird got a drink. Doesn't taste good. Um, a good trick for almost all these waterborne medications, if you're like, I really, my bird just does not want to drink, especially if you're going to keep an outdoor aviary somewhere that's hot and you could get into a dehydration problem quickly, put it, and Tony Arnold's the one who taught me this, put a drop of honey in the water with the medication. It doesn't mess up the medication. You stir it in with the medication and it'll make it much more palatable and the birds will drink it. Um, so coccidiosis is a scary one. I treat coccidiosis if I see it. It is caused, it can live in the ground for basically forever. If you have a moist environment, so rain, fog, high humidity, which I live on the Gulf Coast in the United States. So guess what I have? That's such a daily every, occurrence. Every of the time. <laughs> um, so I used to tweet, uh, treat Baycocks. So Baycocks, I'll, I'll say this up front. Baycocks is a nasty medication. Um, if overdosed, it can do things like sterilize birds. can also, it, it tastes so bad. I mean, I, if I take the top off and just smell it, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't want to drink it. So for those we, of you we just need to listening. Do the, we need to do the kid test on it. Usually if the kid's yeah. eyes water, you know it's bad. <laughs> yeah, for those of you who are just listening, I made quite the face when I smelled this. So this is an option. You definitely want to mix it with honey. Um, you know, it says six milliliters per one gallon of water for two day for two days and can be treated again up to seven days. There's a couple variations of Baycox. Um, Bayer also makes a version. And then there's a, another one called Acox. They all do the same thing. Um, they are nasty. So an alternative to that, like I said, ounce of prevention better than a pound of cure is a seed. It's a, it's a natural seed called Phonio Patty. And if you can't find it online, um, which New York Bird Supply, I know, sells it, um, you can also, people eat it too. So it's a health food also. So like Whole Foods has it. I'm sure you can find it and you can get it shelled or or unshelled. I get it shelled and I just mix it in the egg food. And coccidiosis can also be spread through bird poop. But the cool thing about Phonio Patty is it's not, it's not a medication, right? It's a food and something in that seed naturally stops the spread of coccidiosis. I haven't had to treat for coccidiosis again, knock on wood in like two years because I feed phonio patty. So it's chick safe. It's healthy. And also it's a seed. So birds are getting all the other benefits like calories and everything from it. So it's a much better way. So I don't like treating with medication for all the things we've already talked about. You could have sterile birds if you overdose it or you dose it wrong you can kill the bird anyway so you know if a bird has an infection and then you have liver failure on top of an infection that's a real big problem so you got to be really careful with this stuff um so so jay what what are mm -hmm. you know i i live in utah which is more of a desert area right mm -hmm. and you know we're, we're lucky if our humidity is over 50 percent <laughs> while it's raining <laughs> right right um, yeah <laughs> um what, what are do you, what are some signs that your bird has coccidiosis i mean do you know what are what yeah is so a dirty sign vent. that we could look for big time dirty vent so that'll yeah. be one of the first ones uh light green poop it'll start to cause liver issues and some other things and then uh puffed up super lethargic the touch and goes if i see a bird really puffed up, super lethargic, touching and going with a dirty vent, I pretty much assume coccidiosis unless otherwise cited. And then um, it's just, a, it's a nasty one. And it, it is pretty much universally fatal. I, I had one K, oh, and they get, they act cold. So it was, this is the worst case I had of it here. I had four birds that had it. So I had a male zebra finch, his mate, a mass grass finch and uh, I can't remember what the fourth bird was, but it doesn't matter. And they had it and they were all cold. And so when you saw those four birds, guess what they did? They all got together in a nest. And so that was my big alert because that was super bizarre behavior. Those 
species would never ever do that. And they were all cold and they were so sick and cold that they basically said, be like you being on the subway and being like, Hey man, look, I know we don't know each other, but like we got to huddle together for warmth. Yeah. And, um, of those birds, two of the four survived. Um, which was, frankly, that's a great result. I was able to isolate them all together in a hospital cage, treat them all together, and still lost two of the four. And I caught it pretty early. They were all still able to fly and everything. So, but those are the big signs on that one. Um, if you get phonio patty, like I said, I mean, knock on wood, two years, I haven't had a problem. So, it's not even expensive. Phonio patty is not expensive. And I just would say, like, go that route if you can. If you can't or you're somewhere where you can't get Phonio Patty and you can get Baycox, that's also an option. But be careful because especially if you live in a hot climate, the birds do not want to drink it. And you'll start to see birds have dehydration issues because they just won't drink it. Mix in some honey would be my advice. And, um, and Jay, Jay, maybe what we yeah. could do is, you know, throw we'll, we'll throw some links down, you know, in the description of this podcast, you know, of places that you can go to buy these medications and, you know, some of these names to, as a, as a reference point. So you guys can go in and look up these medications and see if it's something that would be a benefit to your. Birth. That's a good way to do it. And, you know, different countries have different laws, right? I know some of these medications you can't get in Canada, uh, then, and then other places they can get stuff we can't get, you know, like, it, uh, ivermectin, uh, is another one that, you can get over the counter in a lot of countries that treats mites, right? And also worms. Uh, we can get ivermectin in the United States, but I think only with a veterinary prescription. Yeah. And it would, most vets aren't going to write a prescription for a bird they haven't seen. And I'm not going to catch 86 birds and bring them in travel cages to the vet. <laughs> so ivermectin is pretty much out. Also, most ivermectin for animal use in the United States is for livestock and yeah dosing try to figure out a horse dose for a finch right it's, yeah so it's i was gonna like, say they usually come in the dosage of the larger animals and you're right so it's do like your own math it's basically like show the ivermectin to the bird and you've overdosed it right yeah. so um these everything i've got here is four birds dosed for birds so then the next thing if you don't think you're suffering from any of the things we've already talked about there are a bunch of different things. So E. coli is common, paratypoid is common. So a great thing that you can do is get, and there's a bunch of different versions of this, but a four in one treatment. So it says right here on the bottle, a broad spectrum antibiotic, right? It's a, this one actually has a broad spectrum antibiotic and it has the same thing as this, which I always b butcher the pronunciation, but it also has renatazole in it. So this one will cover paratyphoid, canker, coccidiosis, E. coli, and any other bacterial infection like pneumonia or anything. And you might be thinking, how would my bird get this? It's isolated. Well, do you have a mosquito? Have you ever seen a yeah. mosquito? So the mosquito goes outside, bites a wild bird that's sick because they're wild, that is probably fine because it can just live with it, comes in, bites your bird in the night while it's sleeping, and they're sick. Bam. Or you have it. You don't know it. You know, you went to the bird store, you went to a bird show, touched a sick bird, brought it home. Which, by the way, if you go to a bird show or something like that, when you get home, before you go mess with your birds, change your clothes, wash your hands. Like I said, prevention better than cure. So until you can narrow it down or if you're not able to narrow it down, a four-in-one is great. Another option I use, and this is actually an old school option, and people use it. You can see there's a pigeon on here. Is yeah. tryptamine sulfa powder. So this is what sulfa drugs are what were, was used to, to uh, I believe, cure polio. So this was before they had like modern antibiotics, sulfa drugs work. Because they don't get used very often, I find that they're, they work well on things that are antibiotic resistant. So it's been so long since they got hit with sulfa powder that this works. It's also easy to administer. And this is almost universally available because a lot of people keep pigeons. So this is a pigeon dose, but they'll usually have on here either a generic bird dose or a small bird dose also. And it's, it's also pretty safe. So that's another good option. And then 
Uh, I also have, this is Endocox, which is the last medication I'm going to show you, but this is another coccidiosis medication in a powder form. Um, same issues as the other ones. So phoniopathy, but, um, beyond that, you can get into actual antibiotics from vets, right? Um, some of which you could get over the counter. Like I do have doxycycline. I didn't bring it up here because it needs to be refrigerated. Um, that's a good broad spectrum antibiotic. And then Einstein right now is on metronidazole and Batril. Um, uh, metronidazole is a, a more powerful thing. Einstein had some liver disease from a bad diet with a previous owner. Um, and then he got a secondary infection. Your liver plays a large role in fighting off infection. So he had a hard time with that. So, um, these are really small doses for an eclectus parrot, but metronidazole is a pretty powerful antibiotic. Probably not good for finches, but Vatril is great for finches, for canaries. Um, usually you're going to get it from a veterinarian, but if you take a sick bird to the vet and they recommend Vatril, you're probably on the right track. Um, and I think, I mean, that's really about it. The main thing, I mean, I think 80% is don't let them get sick in the first place. And then of that other 20%, more than half of that is isolation and heat. If you can keep them alive and get them some heat and make sure that they have food and water and they're able to eat it, their immune system can do the heavy lifting in a lot of cases. So, so Jay, we've shown a lot of medication. Say I'm a brand new bird owner. I just bought me my first pair of Gouldian finches and because I, I, I pick them because they're more sensitive to some of these diseases, right? Of all the medications that you've shown and talked about, what would be like your top two that you would recommend that bird breeders or bird keepers in general have on hand that, that would be most useful in a situation that their bird gets sick and they're not quite sure what it is, but they, they know the bird needs some, some treatment? Um. Okay, so if your birds, I mean, I, I also, I want to just say scat again. If we all, as a bird community, just use scat, we could probably, uh, you know, get closer to eliminating air sac mites. But I would say probably the four in one. So I got this one from All Bird Products, which is a, a good bird website. Um, the four in one, it's really easy to use. It has very simple directions. There's a dosage on here. Canaries and smaller birds mix this much with this much water treat for seven days, right? And by the way, that means, that doesn't mean mix it once and leave it in for seven days. That yeah. means fresh water fresh every day every with day. a new mix. Yeah. Yeah. And also I, I will sometimes get around that. What I'll do is I'll make like two or three days worth in a water bottle that I haven't, that by the way, to simplify it for your life, if you get a water bottle that has a known measured amount on there, that'll help make your dose easily. I'll put it in the fridge with a big note on there, not for humans, do not drink, because it looks like Gatorade. <laughs> and then that's a couple days worth, but I won't leave it sitting out for seven days. That doesn't count. Um, and, and, and many of those bottles will will say that you can do that, right? You can mix right. a larger bat, right. batch, and it's good in the fridge for a certain amount of days. So just read the directions on the labels, and usually if you can do that, it will say it. Right, and then the other thing – and I haven't talked about that this yet. I was, we were going to get here. I knew if you're going to do that broad spectrum antibiotic, okay, your bird's starting to trend up. You finish your seven days. Well, a thing that antibiotics do is ruin gut flora, just like for a human probiotics in there. Yeah. Probiotics plus is this one. I also really like, and again, I'm sponsored by Hari, but I'm not, I wouldn't push suggest their stuff if I didn't think it worked. Um, Hari makes a product called Clay Cal, which replicates a natural behavior you see in the wild, but that is really good at restoring a healthy gut and healthy gut flora. You can mix the two together. It won't hurt you. So, um, but yeah, and, if you're going to do an antibiotic, you want to follow up with a probiotic. And I was going to say, Jay, yeah, I, I would say those two go in tandem, right? And, and it's the exact same for humans. You know, when we're put on an antibiotic, basically what it does is it kills your immune system along with the bacteria. That it it's kills treating. all the bacteria in your it, gut, it, in your body. Exactly. And, and so then it, when you're done with that, it, it makes you 
susceptible for another infection, right? Or other bacteria to grow mm-hmm. because because the good bacteria has been destroyed as well in your body. Same for birds, right? So that so you know feeding in tandem. You know, as soon as you're done with that antibiotic, and then you do, you know, read the labels. However many days it recommends, you do the probiotic. But do that because then it helps give your bird that boost of putting that good bacteria back in their gut. And then it gives them a better chance of fighting any other bad bacteria that may enter their system within that, you know, week post antibiotic. So I would put those two medications together. If you're going to use an antibiotic, have a probiotic with it as well. Right. And, and I would also say antibiotics tend to work very quickly. So like with Einstein, with these, he's been on the antibiotics for three days. I've seen a rapid turnaround. That doesn't mean stop the antibiotic early. If the jar says seven days, that means you treat for seven days. I'll also say a lot of these have instructions on, you know, if that doesn't work, you can treat again in a week. That doesn't mean you can treat, you can just keep going. If it says seven days, that doesn't mean six days. It also doesn't mean eight. Yep. You, like I've said before, you can you can overdose your birds. You can wreck a liver. You can also make antibiotic resistant things. I mean, there's you can cause more problems than you're solving. And then the big one, sterility. If you if you want to breed birds and that you're hitting them with medication all the time everywhere, it can cause sterility. And you can have a bird that ends up healthy, looks great, and you can't make you any more birds. So yeah. I, th- I think overall, my main thought here is ask somebody who knows more than you a question when you run into this, do as much research as possible. And that doesn't mean post on Reddit at one time. That doesn't mean read one article. <laughs> right. That means all the links on the Google page should be purple. And then you should, you know, Google the next thing. Really read. There, There is a ton of literature on bird illness. Try to find more up-to-date stuff. You know, that old scientific paper that got uploaded to the internet from 1972, probably not as valuable as the one from 2018, right? Right. But um, this is a thing. You're going to run into a sick bird at some point if you keep birds. This is kind of a very high-level basic overview. Chris is right. If you want to go to the vet, go to the vet. By no means are we telling you don't go to the vet. I, I've been to the vet with a bird this week. It is it is valuable. They have been to lots and lots and lots of school to understand it. If you don't have access to a vet, if you live out in the boonies or there aren't, isn't a bird vet near you for whatever reason, which they are sometimes hard to find. Yep. Um, you know, I think within five miles of my house, there are 10 cat and dog vets. My bird vet is an hour away and I live in a pretty big city. Yep. So... I think we have you know, one one well known bird vet in all of Utah. So right. So and can he fit you in in an emergency situation? Right. If he can't fit right. you in until next Tuesday or she, then yeah. that doesn't do you much good for a finch. You're gonna have a dead bird on Saturday, right? Yeah. So these are good things to keep on hand. Start to get on board, and at least give you more runway. Yeah. Right. So. So Jay, I think my takeaway on this is three steps, right? As, as a bird owner, your first step is get to know your birds, watch them, observe them, identify signs that start to look different than the normal, right? Your bird slows down. Its feathers are fluffed up more. It's got runny poop or dirty feathers, all signs. Something's not right. Step two, quarantine, get some heat on them. Make sure that they have easy access to food and water. And then your step three is is medicate, right? Mm-hmm. Have like what Jay recommended, you know, a broad uh, anti- antibiotic with, with a probiotic with it, right? You know, and then, you know, your scat treatments, you know, things like that, you know, I would be really nice to have on hand. <coughs> um, and a lot of those using as a preventative, right? Not even waiting until you see the bird sick, but have... Uh, you know, an annual regimen of how often you're going to treat these birds just to prevent from any of those things happening. But, you know, that those are the three steps that I would put in there. And then, you know, in my case, if I've done those three steps and my bird's still not feeling better and it's, you know, it's important enough to me, then, yeah, I'm going to reach out to an expert or to a vet 
to to see uh, you know what more I can do. Help me understand maybe it maybe it's a specialized type of sickness and I need a specific medication to treat it for. Um, you know, and then like what Jay said, finches are fragile, and there's going to be times that even if we do all of that, our bird still may die. Right, and and it, it's not because you provided bad care. It's, it, sometimes it's <laughs> The birds are, are so fragile, and if you don't have them taken care of three days before they were showing that they're sick, you're too late. And, and so sometimes it's hard to gauge that, but, you know, try to know your birds, watch them daily, try to understand them so that when these signs come, you're, you're ready to take action. Have a few of those medications on hand so that you have something right then that you can start treating them with. And then, you know, and, and hope for the best, hope that you've caught it early enough. And, and then, you know, if you need to reach out to other experts, you know, please do. Yep. I think that that's perfectly said. And I mean, and again, I said at the very beginning, I want to say it again. There are other things that you should be doing husbandry wise that also help prevent this stuff. So big enough cages so we don't have stress, right? Stress plays just like for humans. If you're really stressed all the time, you're going to get sick. Um, Big enough, so a big enough cage, the correct cage mates, and a good solid diet. So birds that are getting all the vitamins they need, all the protein they need, all the calories they need, much less likely to be sick than a bird that's malnourished or dehydrated or something like that. So a lot of this stuff you can get in front of just by practicing the right husbandry, quarantining, prophylactic treatment, all that. You, you know, that being said, when this happens to you, and it it, it will eventually. Right. This is sort of the high level. What do I do now? You know, and, and be prepared ahead of time. Yeah, for sure. And we're here. There's other people, you know, on socials and everything. Like you heard me talk about in this podcast, you know, I had a big battle with coccidiosis when I started outside bird keeping down here in Mobile. Tony Arnold, you know, shout out Tony. We really need to get him on the podcast. Yes. Uh, was a huge, huge help for that. Um, you know, very similar climate where he is in Australia, different hemisphere but very similar climate and he knew, he knew how to help me. So, you know, I know we're up here giving advice, but we still ask for it too. Um, we're still learning every day and all of the stuff I've talked about tonight, stuff I learned through experience. None of, you know, none of this is theoretical to me. I've done it, tried it all and I'm passing it on. Yep. hundred percent. Love it. All right. Well, that is what to do with a sick bird. Um, you know, drop down in the comments. I will say, feel like I need to put this on this video. A YouTube comment is not the best place to get help from us in an emergency. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there, yeah. It, PM YouTube, us. <laughs> yeah. DM YouTube us. does not do a good job of letting you know when a comment has hit. We yeah. get a lot of comments. Shoot me a DM on Instagram or Facebook. I'll see it much, much quicker, like within the hour. And I'll yes. be able to help you. Um, and, and I want, I will help you. That's not one. Like I said, I'm not going to be judgmental. I'm not going to be mean. That's not where I'll come from on that at all. Neither is Chris. We're not like that. Yep. So yep. We're um, all here if you need us, together. if you're in a panic and you're having a big problem, those, you know, it's like, you know, if, if this is happening, don't call the doctor's office, call 911. <laughs> right. Right. So. Um, but if you have just general questions or experiences you want to share, comment section is for you. It's yes, not for us. Do. Yeah, share, let share us know. The vid- share the videos. Get get the information out. We've got, I can't tell you how many times brand new, uh, you know, people with first time owners of birds, you know, ask questions like this. So the more that we can get this information out, the more that we can share these podcasts, hopefully the more people we can reach and they can they can watch these and learn from them you know, and, and hopefully get some real time answers from these podcasts instead of dropping a, a, a you know, a YouTube question and, and we don't get to it for a few days or a couple of weeks after because we didn't know that it popped up in the video comments. Right. And so, yeah, absolutely. You know, help us out by sharing these videos so that we can reach, you know, a broader group of bird nerd lovers and Javier lovers. So <laughs> absolutely. Uh, speaking of that, that's where you can find us on social. So I'm the underscore Javiary or the Javiary on pretty much every social media they've ever invented. If they had MySpace, I'm sure I'd have that too. 
What about you, Chris? <laughs> yep. Hit me up. Facebook and YouTube is bird nerd. And then Instagram is bird nerd four. So, uh, we try to post daily, weekly on, on these platforms, you know, with this podcast and individually, and, you know, please reach out to us. We're happy to help. And we love the support that you guys give us. And, and it makes us enjoy doing this and, and keep doing it. So, yeah, I guess you. that's something I'm bad about saying thank you. I, I know I like when creators do that and I never do it. So uh, I need to be better about that. I'm going to, that might be my very late New Year's resolution. But uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, I started this whole social media thing by accident and I've made great friends. I've done all this other stuff. I am really, I don't have the words to say how blown away I am by all the friends I've made, all the comments, yeah. all the, the love and support that I get. It's the, it's the coolest thing about me, you know, yeah. besides my beautiful <laughs> wife and children. Yep. <laughs> um, but yeah, as far as me personally as a human, this is it. This is, you know, I get to live my passion and share it with y'all. So thank you for that. Yep. I agree hundred percent. Took the words right out of my mouth, Jay. Awesome. All right. Well, that's all the words we got for tonight. We'll catch you all in the next one. See you guys later. Thank you.